I just don't have any time for it anymore. You know, now I just feed into it. Now I just, I'm like, yeah. the, other, the lighter stuff, I'll just clap back and I'm like, let's go. I know what that means for me, more downloads on the pod. And the more downloads, the more money I make. It has been two going on three years since you exited Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah. What has been the greatest lesson for you in the time away from the show? I think I really found my voice. I think when I first started on Housewives, you know, I was the shell of myself. And I think that maybe it's through the podcast or all the other different things that I've done or just getting more comfortable in my own skin. Now I, I don't have that anymore. Yeah, I was gonna ask how has doing two T's made you think differently about your time on the show or your place kind of in the world of Housewives? Ugh, when I watch it, I'm like, oh, I can see exactly what I'm doing there. I was timid. I wasn't 100% comfortable in what I was saying and doing. And then I'm like, oh, there's things I could have done differently if I just would have taken a breath. Is there one moment you wish you could go back and change how you handled it? Ugh, I wish I would have never shown a cropped text message in Bahamas about the dog. The dog. <laughs> uh, Didn't Lisa want you to tell me? Who? Yes. Who from? From John Blizzard. I wasn't even hiding anything. I was just hiding that it broke the fourth wall. And I just, I'm like, why did I show, I should have just showed it and let, right. let editors figure it out. Right. But yeah. Live and learn. Never crop your text messages, folks. Just send <laughs> the whole thing. You had one of the most, maybe the most honest exits from the show. So I could give you the standard response of, Oh, we both came to the decision that it would be best. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. That's not who I am. Why do you think people don't own that they're let go from the show? Well, I think already any form of rejection, it, it feels like rejection when all of a sudden you're not brought back. But I always kind of will push back at rejection with this is the truth and this is me. And what am I gonna do next? And like, I wanna, I wanna work hard and figure out what the next thing is, which is why I think two T's in a pod ended up being so successful. Because I was like, all right, I'm gonna go all in on doing this. I wanna bring Tamara in and now we're over a year into it, still number one. Right. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it was kind of a blessing in disguise, I guess, of you're losing this thing that had kind of become your identity and then you get to transform it into this other now yeah. I get to do it in a robe on Zoom and make more money. It's actually <laughs> fine. <laughs> but pretty much since the day you left, there has been rumor and speculation that Teddy's going to come back or for some fear you're going to come back. Uh, <laughs> Would you even want to at this point? I mean, no one really turns down a diamond, but it's not. There are other jobs out there. There are other TV shows that I would probably be better suited for me at this time. Okay. A very uh, political answer there. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> what else could I, I mean, no one's banging on my doorstep to come back right now. If an offer to join OC with Tamara presented itself. Absolutely not. Okay, <laughs> you don't want an orange. <laughs> I do not want an orange. Would you be at all scared to film with Tamara knowing how she operates in the Housewives universe? Look at me. Yes. Well, you know, I haven't seen past seasons of OC, and that's a constant discussion that we have. Like, should Teddy go back and yes, watch? Yes, you o should. But I almost feel like I need to go in not knowing because, like, I have so much love for Tamara, and you know, I can hold a grudge. Well, I don't. Your love will remain. She invented the genre, is what you'll learn. Okay. <sighs> but I think this season's going to be a real doozy for it. We get in little fights already, so I'm like, I, I don't even want to have to talk about you. Now I'm going to get. Pissed. I shouldn't have told you. This is why no, I didn't want to tell you. In Beverly Hills news, what do you make of Lisa Rinna exiting and what that means for the show moving forward? I mean, I think a lot of people are going to have to, you know, put in their time cards now. They're going to have to punch their, punch their cards and get to work because she did do a lot of it. Yeah. And whether you it bothered you to watch it or you loved her, it's something that at some point to continue the show forward, somebody else is going to have to pick up that slack. Who do you think needs to pick it up the most? I mean, I saw an interview that Sutton did and she said, you know, I go to show up to work every single day. I'm going to work. Every I'm like, no one's talking about that kind of work. Don't pretend. But I think that Sutton is so good in her confessionals that I want her to bring that same energy in scene. The set actress and Lisa never leaves her body. It would take an exorcism to get the soap actress out. And I want to see that same fire that I get in the confessionals. And yeah, I mean, I, I 
I think they all know what they need to do. Your girl Kyle likes to play with the fans and say, you uh. know, I think this might be it. Time's coming to an end. Do you think Beverly Hills could work and continue without Kyle there? I think that Kyle is the glue that holds the girls together. So regardless if everybody's obsessing over Kyle at the moment or they're giving her a hard time, you know, because now online people are so loud that they overshadow the actual fans. Yeah. Um, but I truly think that she's the one person that kind of, even if there are different groups within it, she holds everyone. Anytime your name comes up, a flood of hate comes with it. How have you learned to deal with that? Because I think you are much better at dealing with it now than you were when you were holding a diamond. Well, I think, for one, I think there's a difference between criticism and hate. I can take criticism, but hate, when it comes to like my body or like an illness or my children or whatever it may be, that's why I, I just don't have any time for it anymore. You know, now I just feed into it. Now I just, I'm like, yeah. the, other, the lighter stuff, I'll just clap back and I'm like, let's go. Yeah, my Twitter feed is often half Teddy Mellencamp <laughs> 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 replying to somebody. <laughs> is it fun for you? Does it like scratch an itch for you? Why get involved there? Uh, one, because I, I know what that means for me, more downloads on the pod. And the more downloads, the more money I make. <laughs> People don't realize engagement is engagement, engagement, whether it's positive or negative. Positive or negative engagement is good for me. The second I'm trending people, whether I drive you to the point of, you know, feeling the need to rage tweet, <laughs> you're getting me the clicks. So thank you so much. Do you have a message for the trolls, like at large? <sighs> I mean, nobody's going to hate on you that's doing better than you. <laughs> this all started snowballing with your exit and this increased scrutiny around your business. Do you wish you had been able to do one more season of the show to kind of control that narrative and share that story? Well, I wouldn't even say control the narrative because there wasn't really a story to it. I wish in the in the moment I was able to talk about it, but everybody was like, no, just don't talk about it. The more you don't talk about it, the more it'll go away. But that like all in is I live it and breathe it and love it. And like my heart that it broke, all of those things happened at one time. My daughter had neurosurgery. I got the boot from the show. And then some stranger on the internet started, you know, attacking me. And I just was like, <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> but I think that it's made me stronger. And you know what, I, I plowed through. Did any of that outside noise change at all how you operate the business or think about the business? Well, I think always there's room for growth within your business. And there were certain things that I was like, okay, these are things I'm gonna look into or this, or some things were complete nonsense. Yeah, what's the biggest misconception about All In and the program? I think the biggest misconception is it's about your personal goals. It's Nobody's forcing you to sign up. I'm not walking around to people's houses like, are you gonna go All In right. with me? I'm gonna, I want you to change this and this about yourself. No, you are going online, you are signing up for a program because you wanna change something about your life. And you are paying me and the women that work with me to hold you accountable to doing that. We've said from the beginning, we are not doctors. We've said, this is what works for us. We all went through the program. That's why we, you know, it's the only thing that's ever worked for me. If it doesn't work for you, also let us know and you can go. And what's your message to, because it still gets regurgitated that this is a dangerous program or an unhealthy program. What's your message to that dialogue that's out there? Um, it's been the only thing that's ever worked for me to not go into a dangerous and unhealthy place, being held accountable to taking the best care of myself that I can showing up for myself. If I didn't have one of the women sending me a message like, hey, Teddy, are you gonna go out for a walk today? Or are you gonna do yoga? Are you gonna do that? Like, I don't, I don't know where I'd be. And I also feel like the podcast has contributed to finding your place in this world a little bit. What's been the rose and thorn of the process for you? You know, iHeartRadio had been asking me, you know, since I had been let go from Housewives, we used to, we talk about Housewives, we talk about Housewives, can we switch? And I said, only if I can have a co-host and they were like okay and they gave me some suggestions and I was like no 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 and they were like well then who do you want I'm like I want Tamara Judge she also <laughs> was recently fired and so I called her and you know got her to sign the deal and here we are who did you say no to who was on that list I mean I don't even I well the, they wanted it two T's so that's that's your hint okay. who are other T's you and Tamara are both very unfiltered on the podcast you share your whole opinion good, bad, and ugly about everybody. Who have you ticked off the most? Who's been in your DMs the most complaining or that's got word back to you of like, they do not like the things you're saying? Oh, I think Heather. 
she was supposed to come on. Well, both Heathers, actually. The Heathers. Oh. Apparently, Heathers are not into me sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, both Heathers. Where do you and Vicki Gunvalson stand right now? On we're not show. pitching the t Two Cheese in a Teapot p podcast right now. Well, he, we're talking about the okay, podcast? But, okay. Let's just... She loves that I have a podcast with Teddy. You don't like Teddy Mellencamp? I don't know Teddy Mellencamp, but I don't like Teddy Mellencamp. Oh, you know, <laughs> Vicky is, I was joking the other day because Tamara and I were talking about something and I was like, oh, I need to check out Vicky. And I went to go look for her and she blocked me and I didn't even know. I can't even stalk her. <laughs> um, no, but I, uh, we're fine. I think she just, she she likes to give Tamara a hard time and be like, I don't want to talk about the podcast. Yeah. I don't want this. And I'm just, the, you know, the she, low hanging fruit. Is there anyone you will not invite on the show? I don't think I would personally invite Camille on the show. Okay. I mean, I, I don't have the choice though. I'm not the boss. <laughs> so, I mean, I, there was somebody that said they would come on not with me, only with Tamara though. Do you think doing the podcast has affected your chances of doing, either going back to one of the shows or doing an Ultimate Girls Trip? I don't think so. I mean, I'm not, I'm obviously not on the girls trip right now, right. but um, I think that it maybe has opened more doors to like have more conversations about it. If you were offered girls trip, is there a dream cast people you would like to see there? And on the flip side, people you would not like to see there. I love Potomac. So any of those girls I would love to be with. Um, I think they would be fun. Miami, those girls are fun. I, all, I mean, my, I'm fine with pretty much anybody as long as I would like to be in a warm location. Okay. That's my one request. You don't want to go to I don't, Dorinda's house. I don't, I love you Dorinda. I don't want to go to your house. I also don't want to go anywhere cold. And what about doing the Traders, which is a cold location, but a competition and you could win something. Or I could be voted out first and then the online hate will just go. I, I mean, I think I'm pretty obsessed with Trader. I'm not through it all, but it gave me a new appreciation for Brandy. Oh yeah. Like she can clock. I mean, yeah, I love competition.